Awesome. So in week nine for CS50, we're going to be moving a bit beyond the basics of web page development and starting to learn how to create really robust web applications. So let's jump right into it. We're going to use a framework called Flask to create our web apps. Flask is cool because it allows us to combine HTML, CSS, JavaScript with the functionality of Python and SQL. So we're going to have a lot of fun doing stuff with Flask. As usual, the lecture is great. And if we head over to Lab 9, the first thing we're going to do for Flask is implement the birthdays web app. Like It's a simple web app. But it's cool because we want to keep track of friends' birthdays and we want to do it live so that and interactively so that people can input their birthdays and it automatically shows up. And basically the way that's gonna happen is if we look at this setup here, these different oh these different inputs in this form are for a user to input their name and birthday or maybe their friend's info or a fictional person's info, like Ron, Hermione, and Harry. And then it's going to add their information to a database, a SQL database that's going to allow them to see everyone else's information. There's other things we can add, so I optionally chose to add another thing, which we'll, which we'll see in a second. So the information implementation details go a little bit more in detail into that but if I start going through what's happening here one thing I did is I took the Montserrat font from the trivia web page we did for week 8 and I used it here because I like that font so as we scroll down we can see I made a note here like okay to do to myself like hey create a form for users to submit a name a month and a day and yeah so add an HTML form that lets users type in a name a birthday month and a birthday day be sure the form submits to its action with a method of post so this is I'm pretty sure if I remember right this is a tip from the CS50 week 9 page setup so just wanted to keep that comment there for me as I was typing up the code so It'll help too if we go over to app.py too to like see what's happening here. So yeah, a lot of this is just you know fill, filled in already from from CS50. But what we needed to do really is add the user's entry into the database, which as we saw earlier connects to this form we need to make for people to input their name, birthday month, and birthday day. So basically we can create these um, different Python variables and if the request method is post then the name will be the request.form.get.name or not dot, dot name but get name same with month and day and then we basically want to create a SQL execution line to basically add that user's information to the database called birthdays.db. So the way to write that query is to say insert into birthdays. So birthdays is the database. Name, month, day, and then values. The notation for having basically a, a mystery value or maybe the better way to say it is to have a placeholder for a variable value is question mark and then name month day are going to be inputted in these respective places and those are the variables declared here and then if it's not post then we just want to display the entries in the database on index.html and again we want to have a line that's a SQL query and this is just going to select everything from birthdays then we're going to want to render that in index.html and then we add this so that the render template knows that all birthdays should equal all birthdays so when we say in index.html to loop across all birthdays it's referring to that all birthdays variable from earlier so that's how it knows to do that 
And then, yeah, getting into this loop, really, this is a table that we're setting up here. So here's the table head up here with three columns, name, month, and day. And we want to fill in each of the rows of those columns with one user's information. So we're gonna, for a given user, for basically for a birthday and all birthdays, we're gonna input that, or rather, basically print out that user's name, birthday month, and birthday day. And then I added this thing. So this is like a form. It's like a button that allows the user to actually delete an entry from the database. So we'll see how that looks in a second. So is there anything else worth going over? Oh, um, yeah, pretty sure I don't actually remember, honestly, if I, if I added delete, but regardless, basically what's happening here is that if we click the delete button, then what's going to happen is the SQL, this SQL code is going to run. So it's going to delete from the birthdays database where the ID equals the ID given before. So let me go ahead and just open up the actual web page and we can check it out. So let's CD into birthdays, flask run. Okay, and then we can go and check it out right here. So let me see. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at what's out, what's right here. So we can see that I already added my name here. But let's say I'm like, okay, you know what? I That's not my real birthday, so let me go ahead and change that by first deleting my entry. So I'll click delete and notice Daniel's gone from the list, which is totally what we want, whatever. And then let's do, yeah, 12, sure, 12, 10. Yep, so that works great. Birgitta, uh, my best friend, you know, birthday month 12, day 10. But you know what, if I kind of don't want to keep track of Birgitta's birthday, we can go ahead and delete that person. And then again, that, that works great. So this is actually exactly what we want to see with this implementation. And that works great. So that's birthdays. And then if we go ahead and go to the CS50 webpage for what's expected next, for problem set nine, there's one assignment and it's finance. Finance takes some time to really to get the details down, but it's it's really cool. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. Essentially what we want to do is we want to create a web application to allow users to create an account and then start off with $10,000 of fake money, of course, but then use that you know digital representation of the money to buy stocks and we wasn't also be able to have this quote page be able to accurately display the current cost of different stocks and we're going to connect to an API to be able to do that so it's a pretty cool exercise because there's there's a lot going on right here the implementation talks a little bit about what's exactly happening and what's exactly expected for the different pages We'll go ahead and just take a look at some of them. So I'm not gonna walk through every single thing, but let me go ahead and close birthdays stuff. So for example, I'll take a look at register. And if anyone has any questions about quill or anything, feel free to leave your comment below. But for the app.py, the Python um, sort of con configuring app for our Flask app, for finance. We see a lot of imports, which is totally, totally expected. So if we go down to one of the ones that we actually need to do, let's see. Yeah, that's buy. I want to go down to register though. Okay. So, cause we're just going to take a look at register. Okay, sweet. So for the app, route of register, we want to have two options for post and get. So if the request method is post, 
first what we need to do is validate the username submission. So I was thinking through how to do this and one way that I ended up thinking could be good for this is to start off by getting the username from the form of the uh, register page that we need to create and same with password. I also created a variable called confirmation and that's really just a third field in the registration page and I'll show that in a second but basically it's sort of like there's username and then password and then it asks the user to re-enter their password and again just backing up registration this is about creating a new account to use for our CS50 app so confirmation is just going to check if the password is the same as the one entered just above and then uh, DB username check so this is really going to select everything from the users table where the username equals the username given above. So if not username or length db username check equals one. So this means that if not username means that n like nothing has been submitted for a username. So it's null or length username check equals one. That means that when we did this check, there was one person with that username already. We want to return an apology, an error message that says, hey, either user you've submitted no username, so it's a blank username, or that username already exists. So that takes care of both of those possibilities. And then we also want to ensure that a password was submitted because if no password was submitted, we want to tell the user, hey, like, you have to provide a password. And then if password does not equal confirmation, then we want to say, hey, passwords must, must match. So this hopefully makes it clear why I've added the confirmation variable. If confirmation does not equal password, then yeah, they, they don't match. But if they do match, then what we want to do is if we're getting to else, we know that the user has inputted a username so not a null username and it's not a duplicate username also their password and confirmations match which is great and then with that all that in mind we can go ahead and move on here to where we want to generate password hash so one thing that's in the cs50 details is that we actually should not what's it called save the user's actual password we need to actually save a hash of the password. I think it's, I don't actually remember where it says that in here, but uh, oh yeah, yeah, it's right here, okay. So storing a hash of the user's password, not the password itself. And we can hash the user's password with generate password hash. So that's a function that's defined elsewhere. So yeah, we can generate the password hash and this is gonna take as input the actual password and then we're going to use this method so this is not like my idea this is from the documentation of generate password hash same with salt length 16 so not, not anything to worry about it's cryptic but it's not nothing to worry about and then we want to basically insert that username and hash into the users table in the finance database and then we want to redirect but if it's not post, so going up above, then we just want to render the template register. So let's go to take a look how that looks right now. So CD finance, and then we're going to do flask run. Sweet. Okay, awesome. So this is the home page of our web app. And let's go ahead and go to register and try to try to register for an account. So let's say we want to register Bob the Builder. You know, Bob the Builder, he worked hard, you know, all those years, and now he wants to retire and he needs to start investing. So he's jumping into CS50 Finance to invest. So let's give him a password of like Walrus here. And then I'm gonna retype something pretty different. like. We can't see it on the screen, but we know for sure like those aren't going to be the same because they're different number of characters. 
So if I go ahead and try to click register, then what's gonna happen is it's gonna say, oh, hey, about the builder, your password has to match. So, okay, well, let me go ahead and try that again then. So I'll say Bob the Builder, and I'll say Walrus, and then I'll type Walrus. And then let's try to register now. Okay, great. So that's what we want. And then we can actually now log in with Bob the Builder and Walrus. And then what should happen is it should, yep. Okay, so this is actually good. So it's looks like an error message, but since it says 200, it actually means that the um, request was successful. And I actually just uh, would need to like clean up this specific page, but actually that's, that's great. So another page that I implemented all the way is the quote page. So let's say I wanna take a look at how Tesla's doing right now. A share of Tesla costs $251.92. If you'd like to invest in Tesla, please click buy above. I actually am totally fine with the fact that I didn't quite finish everything about this problem because I just wanted to understand what's happening. And now I know enough to where if I needed to, I could totally finish up solving this problem. But I'm happy with it. You know, I think you only need a 70% to pass this given problem set. And I got about that, so I was like, okay, cool, perfect. So we can see that the application works, register works, login works, quote works, and buy half works. Um, so I didn't finish buy or sell, but for me, I was totally happy with just calling it good because I just wanted to move on. And yeah, that's about it for what I'm gonna talk about for finance. And really the concepts that we discussed here are gonna be helpful for finishing up buy and sell and quote. But yeah, keep in mind, you don't have to finish everything to get a passing score on the problem set. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful.